Brown Dogs Farm are Norwalk, Iowa made hot sauces and dressings. Brown Dogs Farm was born out of the dream to emulate the simple life of Rob's grandparents, who inspired him with their hard work and abundant gardens. Rob and Amanda set out to create a unique blend of fruit and pepper that would satisfy the part of the brain that craves great flavor without sacrificing the spice of the peppers. Sweet, but still packing heat. With combinations like jalapeno green apple, habanero peach, cherry rhubarb reaper, and other great flavor combinations, there is a spice and flavor that is right for any party or get together. BDF also has homemade versions of their classic and spicy ranch that are one of a kind. You can order all of those and more online at www.browndogsfarm.com and ask your local grocery to stock up. Sigh of the Storm is brought to you by Revelton Distilling Company. You can visit them in Osceola, Iowa or on the web at www.reveltondistillery.com. Welcome to Sigh of the Storm. Marcus right now is pissed, but we'll get to that later. So I'm joined here. I'm George Trice, joined here with Marcus Pfizer and Brent Kervay. Um, and so we have we have we just talk. We have our running show that I typically have, and then I'm sitting here watching this game behind me. And you know, it's kind of like a couple questions popped into the mind. Like I, I was talking to PJ, and everybody, you know, a little, little upset with what's going on right now. So I want to get into it, but I'm not. You know, I'm not I'm gonna leave the suspense there. We're gonna let's go backwards. Let's just go, let's just start off. So three beers media, Revelton, Brown, what is it? Brown Brown Dogs Farm. Brown Dog Farm. Hey, I didn't get ranch. Neither. I, I mean, hey, listen. The perks of the ah. perks of the job. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like when, I'm, you, when you when you right local, you get better stuff. So like they, they need a taste tester. You feel me? Oh, so I'm here. Oh, that's messed up. So I got I got out of the mail and I'm like, man, where's the ranch at? I was telling my wife about the ranch. Right. You know, it's just mm. like, you know, uh, for Christmas, Three Beers Media, they're getting us uh, some some pullovers or something like that. You know, me and Marcus's might be port authority, but since Brent's there, they don't got and they don't got to ship it. His might be like an OGO right, or right, a yeah. you know a Nike. Hey, you know, listen, man. He said port authority. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing against port authority. <laughs> nothing against port authority. Uh, you know, like, that's fire. That's fire. My first, my first shirt shirts that I ordered for by like my nonprofit port authority. They're good. They're a good quality shirt. You gotta yeah. get the right one. So nothing right. support port authority. If you're listening, we would love for you to be a sponsor. No, nothing against you. <laughs> but just I'm just saying, like, y'all are newer than like OGO and Nike, and you know, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You mm-hmm. know, but uh yeah, nothing against that. But you know, <laughs> Revelton Distillery, I'm out. If you can send me some right now, um, because I'm out, I'm drinking um I'm drinking Uncle Nears tonight. Mm. So hey, they just uh, blew up too, by the way. I think well, I've been just hit like a billion dollars or something like that. Yeah, it's black owned. Um yeah. and, and I've been rocking with them for a while. So I um I'm part of the Black Bourbon Society. Um it's a group of, of bourbonites uh, based out of Kentucky and uh the Black Bourbon Society. I got my card, my black card. Um nice. so I can never I can never lose that. <clears throat> but you know, I got my glass that I use from them. But they're a good thing. If you ever check them out. They've been featured in some bourbon magazines. They're doing some big things for the for the mm-hmm. black uh, black people. Um, and you know, we were part of you know building that building that 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 industry. So um, you know, talking with them. Um, and while I'm talking about bourbon, because we're talking about Revelton, I found out something. I was um, out in Cancun, and before I went to Cancun, you know, I, I I'm one of those people that when I travel to the Caribbean, you can only get pure white Hennessy mm. when you come back into the country. So I used to get pure white Hennessy when I came back for like $35 a bottle. It was cheap. Ooh. And I was at the duty free this time on the way back. It was $85 a bottle. Inflation. Um, well, well, no. So this is what it is. So what I found out, I was doing some research on it before I went and I wanted to see if it was true. Pure white Hennessy is just not aged as long. It's a quick turnaround mm. Hennessy. Mm. So people covet it here in the United States. So they would sell those bottles for like one fifty back in the day, but they only cost like thirty five dollars. Now the Caribbean used that because they use it as mixers. It's, it's cheap for the locals to buy. But because mm. people like us didn't know 
we buy it out of the duty freeze and we've jacked the prices up. So now it's not even affordable for the locals to buy as like their quote unquote Jack Daniels entry level, mm -hmm. you know, bourbon. Um, and so that's the story I found out about that. It was kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to talk about we, we already did the wrap up of the football season, but we had a couple things that happened over the, uh, the past week. Um, you know, we we talked about this a couple things we talked about. We talked about we always talk about Iowa Staters in the NFL. Um, so we're going to get to that. We talked about, you know, the OC. Was there a change needed at the OC? That's what we talked about last last time. And then we also talked about and I, you know, I started this before a uh, quarterback controversy. And, you know, so I want to hit on all three of those things, because for one, we're going to go to the NFL. Brock Purdy, QB1. QB1. Um, mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, when Garoppolo went out, broke his foot. Luckily, Garoppolo don't have to um, have surgery, but, you know, it's going to be a, a process. He won't be back to the playoffs. Um, and so Sunday on December 4th, Brock was 67% for completions, 210 yards, two touchdown and interception, passer rate, QBR rating of 88.8. Doing yeah. business. He does enough to keep you in it, man. Nothing wrong with that. Does doing his business, like you know, winning the game. You know, it's like his first, his like his first, his, what was it the first or second pass was a touchdown. Yeah. So it's like you know he was he was ready he was prepared to be there, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and it was warm weather because you know he's from out here in uh, Arizona, so it was warm weather down there in Florida. So uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, oh, hold on, no, they were in San Francisco. They were home. Were they? Okay. they were home. Yeah, they were home. And he did it at home, you know. So, hey, shout out to, to Brock Purdy, you know, playing the NFL. Um, it wasn't much to talk about in the Brown and the Bears uh, Packers game. I, I don't know. Montgomery and Lazard wasn't really much to talk about. Um, but, you know, again, representing out, out in them streets. So good job mm -hmm. to y'all, too. Um, but let's get to what we really want to talk about. OC change. Um, so when I look at our OC and I was doing, looking at some of his stuff and for one, he only recruited three stars. He was only able to get three star recruits. That was his whole, his whole thing was three stars. So my question to you, Brent, my question to you, Marcus is how do we get those four and five stars? That's, that's one question. When we talk about that to come to Iowa state, um, because when I talk about that quarterback controversy with Decker, so I was talking about, we got a four-star quarterback from Ankeny coming, J.J. Cole, coming next year. So he's a four-star. You know, we got that wide receiver from uh, Nebraska that's committed, that just committed to us after all this went down. After, you know, so after we got a new OC, December 6th, you know, we get a transfer from, from uh, Nebraska coming through for a wide receiver. So, you know, we're getting, we're getting people coming to us. The OC change, I don't know if that sparked it. So, you know, tell me tell me what y'all thought is on, you know, Nate uh, Shilhase. Is it Shilhase? Shilhouse. 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 Yep. Shilhouse. How is he, uh, he going to do? And, you know, what are y'all thinking in this whole change? Uh, I mean, I think uh, fresh blood is always good, man. Obviously, we needed to make a change. So, you know, we, we did it. Um, I think there's a couple of more things that still got to fall in place, but kids flock to that. Uh, mm. Shell House is just a good, relatable coach to the guys. Mm. So just being around him, um, he actually stopped by our weight room on Monday. So I got to see him, and that was before they even announced the job. But um, I think he's going to be the right young mind for the guys that can kind of mm. relate a little bit better. He was a dog in college, too. So yeah. I think he'll be able to bring some of – he ran the ball to a QB. Yeah, mm -hmm. at, at Illinois. So mm -hmm. I think he'll be able to kind of, you know, add a little bit of extra wrinkles, man, and, and really utilize us. But that age helps a lot. I think that age attracts a lot of young guys. Because, gotcha. you know, tougher for, you know, like, ah, the dude kind of old. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> the guys think the older you are, the game goes past you real quick. So Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think having him in, man, is going to help a lot. But I'm still waiting to see what we bring for, you know, for an offensive okay. line coach and stuff like that. Okay. What's yeah, up? Oh, no. My son just walked in. So come here, Izzy. You gotta, you gotta. I want y'all to see the mug he he got on with him. He drinking hot chocolate. Hold on, they gotta see. Yeah, he, he naked, but he got the <laughs> Iowa State. Draws. I see <laughs> it. Yeah. He got, What's he up, got the man? hot chocolate and Iowa State cup. There he is. With might marshmallows. Need, <laughs> might need to pour some bourbon in there. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Marshmallow right just Yo, came without even without yeah. bourbon. 
<laughs> All right, but let me finish this call, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. You just got in the shower? Love mm-hmm. you, buddy. All right. That's, <laughs> okay, that was our special guest for the evening. Israel <laughs> Jerome Trice came in the building. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, you're you making some sense with the younger, the younger uh, blood coming in. Um, you know, I, you know, I applaud the decision and the, and the conversation that um, that um, that he had to have. You know, because he brought he brought him from, he brought his old OC from Toledo, so he knew yeah. that they went uh, as a manager. One of the hard I had two hard things I had to do. I had to coach somebody out that used to be my boss. They ended up becoming I ended up becoming their boss, and I had to coach them out because they weren't doing their job. That was one of the hardest things. The second hardest thing that I did as a manager at Nationwide was a team that I used to be a part of, party with the team. We was just all colleagues. I ended up being the manager of that group. And so you have to kind of separate that business with that friendship. And I think that, you know, part of this, part of the, the, the conversation that Matt had to have, it was separating the, the business side from the friendship side. And it was a hard conversation. But as a leader, he showed what kind of leader he is by, you know, having that true conversation and talking about it, you know, and, you, and deciding that, you know, that for the best for this to, to happen. You know, that's that's my thought on it. Yeah. I mean, at, at that point, you know, even him himself, he has to feel like, you know, something something's just not working out. You know, we have to look ourselves in the mirror and understand it. And, you know, there's been a little con- controversy behind it. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, you don't want to advocate to, for anyone losing their job. But at the right. same time, you know, um, like I said, you know, to some people on Twitter, you know, I've lost jobs. You know, so mm-hmm. you know it happens. I have happens. as well, and and it's it's not all the time because of negligence or you know performance or yada yada yada. Sometimes it's just not a good fit. You mm-hmm. know, some some situations may not be a good fit. Um, so you know the way we were we worked moving the ball this year. You know, the offense was kind of standing, and you know I'm, I'm sure he was hearing some of the whispers and things like that. Um, and like you said, for Coach Campbell, I know it was a hard decision for him to make, but at the same time, you know, we got to do what's best for the ball club, and, and I'm sure he understands that. It's not like he's going to be unemployed for a yeah. long time. Or, no, no. You know, there's not going to be other opportunities out there, but, um, you know, it just is what it is. We definitely thank, thank you for everything that you did for the program, you know, without yeah. a doubt. Uh, good moments, bad moments, and indifferent. There's, there's, always, there's always a uh... – Everybody has a style, and the style that he that he coaches that as he looks at the offense is different. It just didn't work for the program that we had here. Like you said, Marcus, he's going to fit somewhere else. Um, you know, he's going to get swallowed up, and that's what a lot of these coaches will have. A lot of these coaches, these OC, they transfer because the schemes that are being played and, and drawn up in different programs fit that person a little bit better. So, you know, shouts out to him. Uh, he'll like I said, he'll, you said he'll find something. So. You know, that's what's going on in the football world, you know. Um, I just think that that's a, that's a start to see something different for next year. Uh, I'm excited to see what it brings. Uh, I'm excited to talk to the, to the team and the people that um, that are, are there coming in and playing for these coaches and seeing how this uh, this all works out. So, um, excited for next year. Might have tried to do a live episode from the spring game or something like that for football, yeah. um, you know, and then try to get back for a, a basketball game as well, but. Let's move on. So, um, you sure you want to go? You want to go there? I, I, I don't. And so, <laughs> so, so, listeners, we are recording this live while we're watching the game live right now. Like, so it's it's fourteen forty four left in the second half. Twenty nine to fifty five. We are losing. Um. Oh, and uh, we just shot a ball that hit off the top of the backboard. Crazy. Uh, yep. Yeah, but we got we got to put back. We got to put back. Come on with it. Um, did, we got we got one pill back in the first home. <laughs> <That's what, laughs> down, down 55 31. We flex. Oh, uh, mm. yes, yeah. So, I'm gonna go backwards. So, um, the Iowa Corn Cyhawk series, do y'all remember if y'all won that when y'all played, or do, you, do y'all even really remember what that is? Because I, I didn't even really know what it was. Okay. Mm. So Every what week is. against Iowa was hate week, so it didn't matter. Like so, whatever so was up for grabs. That's like. what it is. So that's really what it is. It's a <clears> it's a series. 
all the events that we play against Iowa, Iowa, Iowa State, and the mm. state, whether it's wrestling, basketball, softball, it's also actually another another trophy, another thing that Iowa State can get. And mm. right now, we are leading 5-2. Um, we were leading 5-1 up until yesterday to the women lost to Iowa in basketball. Tonight, if we don't pull it out, it'll be 5-3 to three with mm. five more head-to-heads this season. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whoever wins the most out of those head-to-heads – you know, so right now we'll be we're leading, but you know that's what it is, and so um, that's why it's always you know we always got to stick to Iowa, and right. and the women losing last night, and the men showing up like this tonight. I had some burning questions on the on the men's basketball uh, game, and kind of I'm gonna go word for word. So PJ Runge, this is this is his word for word. He was texting me some quotes. Um, How in the fuck are they, <laughs> are they this open for the, for the three? Well, I, it's like, 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 I, I, I didn't want to say that, but oh you know, God. because it's like we're du- we're we're doubling the bigs and letting them hit three pointers. Yeah. That kind of answers the question. But like, what are we doing? That's the first question. What are we doing? You know, let, let's answer PJ's question. Thank you, PJ, for sending that in via the, uh, the social media. Right, right. <laughs> uh, and a friend of mine, she texted me the same friend that you know we talk to our shit when we beat them in football. <laughs> she asked me, what is this shit? <laughs> and I said, exactly that. <laughs> exactly that. And that's what exactly is going on. Um, I mean, of course, we never expect it. You know, once you did get stuff in a hole like that, man, it's hard to get out. It's hard to get out no matter where you are, wherever you're playing, on the road, at home, neutral site, but especially this series against Iowa, uh, the way the women won um, against us last night to come into this game, you know, once they get you down, once they get us down, it's going to be a hard, hard hill to climb out of. And and that's what's going on right now. It's, it's one of those games that you just cannot grasp back. You know, every shot that they throw up, it's, it's the one where, you know, miss, off, miss, miss shot, they get offensive rebound, seven, eight offensive rebounds in a row. One of those shots are going to go in. You never end that possession with a defensive stop. And it's, it's those shots like that right there that takes the win out of your sails. And everything is going right for them right now. Just to see yeah. 55 31 is just, oh my gosh. Yep. That's, oh my gosh. You don't want to see. Look at how you see the, you see the Iowa Staters gotcha. in, the, in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Not happy at all. Like, this is, I mean, when you look at that, like, you know, PJ said they're doubling the bigs when they're just hitting three, everybody on the team hit a three pointer. I don't know when the last time everybody on the opposing team in the starting lineup hit a three pointer on us. So even their big hit a three pointer on us, you know, it's like, you know, what, what is, what is going on here in this defense? You know, what is, why are we, why are we playing this game the way we are? So we got 14 minutes to, to get this, to get back in and play some defense, you know, cause we, we talked about, we talked about, uh, we got the one offensive board, but Osunny, you haven't seen him and how he's been playing, but well, we got to get more much. boards. Yeah, it's like I haven't seen him in the game, so I don't know if I've just been missing it. But, you know, Did he what? Get in foul trouble earlier? Is that what it was? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to look right now and see, but I haven't seen anything come up yet. Nice Thank defense. You. That was a good defense, defensive play right there. Okay. So, I mean, so, Marcus, question for you, man. What are you telling your guys now? you down 24. Uh, you got a ton of time left. What are you telling telling your guys? Well, you, you got to make you got to make short runs. You got to you got to get four, six, eight here every mm. you know in, in spurts. Um, they got they got to come in in spurts of where it's momentum killers. You yeah. know, uh, you get four, six, eight here. You know, maybe you foul and send somebody to the line, just slowing it down a little bit. Maybe they make one of the two. Or even if they make those two, and then you come back down and you make a three, now you got eleven to that two. So you're still running, you're still moving, you're yeah. still knocking it down a little bit at a time. Now it, it can definitely happen, you know. Yeah. I, listen, I tell my kids, you know, all the time, like this is basketball. I, I've been in games in the NBA, but I've been in games in the NBA where we were up thirty at the half and lost by thirty. Mm-hmm. You know, you got somebody like Trace McGrady across. Oh, yeah. the court. <laughs> <It can happen. laughs> so yeah. you know anything can happen i mean you know 57 33 is not terrible it's a ton of time left you know get them to make mistakes or you know when you're up 
when you're up big, you tend to try things you normally wouldn't try. Yeah. Uh, you know, now, you, now you're going to work on your game. Now you, you try to get your career highs and things like that. So mm-hmm. if you can get them to make some short mistakes, they call a timeout, and then you keep the momentum going, you can chip away at it. So two two things you said. You said one of the things you said about momentum, and um, I was at the line right now in my game, mm-hmm. and he got an offensive rebound, got fouled on offensive rebound. But you know we're he, he missed a free throw. Good shit. Um, but when I look at this, okay, we're not playing tough underneath to get offensive boards or defensive boards. That seems like we're not really playing hard in the paint. Um, but the second thing is I asked of you is what should the pace be? Because when I look at this, Iowa hat is slow and slowing that pace down. Iowa State's running and trying to run it, not running gun, but trying to run and get into the basket and get these quick plays because they down. Is that the right strategy for what the situation is right now? Well, you got to speed them up defensively. You know, mm-hmm. you got to make them make mistakes, like I said before. You know, um, double, double, make them question themselves on the passes. Not, not necessarily get steals, but deflections are more scary to me than steals. You know, mm-hmm. if, you, if you throw a pass and there's turnover then you just know it's a turnover but if you got if you got guys in the pass lane and they keep keep tipping it keep tipping it then you're you're timid because oh that's almost a turnover Mm -hmm. so when you when you get them to make those type of type of mistakes then it leads to turnovers and then you got you you know you you chip away from it uh, away uh from the lead with that you know uh pressure hard the momentum and things like that is going to change uh but it's going to have to start on the defensive and it's, it's if they're making shots, all the shots that you're making behind them is not going to catch up unless they're just making twos and ones and you're making all threes. And, you know, last I know, Steph Curry was in San Francisco. So. <laughs> but but like you said about momentum yeah. and, like, being prepared at the beginning, um, they haven't played since Sunday. So they've had five – yeah, I see that. I see, yeah. They had, they had five days off between this game. Mm. And I I will play Duke on Tuesday. So we look unprepared. Like we talked about this this series that we have and it's Iowa. We just look unprepared with five days off. You know, what what is when you have a long lull like that, what 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 does that do to you when you have that many, that many days between the games? Uh well, I mean, it just it depends on you know coaching and what their their approach and what their game plans are. Um you have to be creative with practice. First of all, you can you can not not practice. You yeah, know, you, yeah. you have mm-hmm. to keep that intensity up. Um, we we used to practice on game days, like literally oh. be taped. Ask Stevie, ask parents, ask, ask. We used to we used to practice on game days. If you were out there without tape on, then you probably wasn't playing that game because you you are already not prepared. You mm. have to keep that momentum. You have to keep that mindset. Um, you know, when you have a long, long stretch days in between, we almost like to play more games than having a lot of days off because we knew Coach Stacy was just going to be a maniac with the practices and things <laughs> like that. So, but it, but it keeps you ready, keeps you prepared. Um, to to get up ready for a game like this, you got to be locked in. You know, uh, maybe they maybe they were looking to, for for to this game and. And not paying attention really to do, even though you know that's a, a university you definitely want to knock off as well. But you know, this one right here is the one in every sport, all the way down to swimming or whatever that we got to deal with that we're looking for and we're circling on the calendar. And you know, when you, when you come out last like this and you know, against a team like this, you're not going to win it. Yeah, I feel you on that. Um, you know, you bring you bring up some good points of, of what needs to be done. Um, and you bring up some stories with the old heads that you know how y'all prepare for it and things like that. But we have to, I mean, again, we have less than three weeks, about three weeks until um conference play. So again, mm-hmm. Baylor is um is on the 31st on New Year's Eve. Um hopefully I watch that because I might I might try to go to the Fiesta Bowl down here. Um, since it's in here in Glendale. So I might I might be out there chicken it because that's on New Year's Eve. But, um, you know, getting prepared for conference play because you always prepare or over-prepare for this Iowa game. Looking at this team right now, looking at overall what you've seen, um, uh, Reggie is not going to jump on the podcast tonight because he's on a date with the missus. So um, I don't know. I've, I've been trying, I'm trying to see if I can grab some, some guests on with us. Uh, but, yeah, so – 
you know, what do you have to what do they have to do to be prepared for conference play where it matters? Because right now, you know, when it's being seven and one, we're good. Our record is going to be, you know, it should it'll be above 500. Um, but, you know, what do we need to do? Um, first of all, not pay attention to what our record is. I mean, we saw that from last year. You know, that, that really means nothing other than the fact of, you know, getting some good quality wins if they are quality wins um, and getting some reps and, and learning how to gel together. Uh, we, we've all said it, the Big 12 is a beast, and it's a different dynamic once you get into that, that lead in conference play. Um, so, it, you know, we're, we're going to hopefully – the coaching staff has been paying attention and, and scouting because that's the that's the main part uh, of the season. You know, you can go undefeated in in the, in the off season or the preseason or whatever you want to call it, and and get the conference and don't win any any conference games. And now you're hoping to do something in the conference tournament if your if your conference have one, or hoping the uh, committee squeeze you in for you know how how good you did in the beginning. And vice yeah. versa. Like you can you could have had the toughest schedule in the world at the beginning of the season and then you get into your conference and that prepared you for that. Now you're knocking everyone off in conference. So um we just gotta take, you know, this grain of salt and make it, you know, bigger than what it is for the Big Twelve because that's how it's gonna be once that those those games begin. So Marcus, you gotta open up your chat. I'm not gonna read I'm not gonna <laughs> Brent's over there laughing. I'm not going to read this uh, comment that we got to say it on air. Hey, open the chat on the um, on the uh, Zoom. <laughs> on Zoom. <laughs> on Zoom. Because you knew Priest. You know Priest. Nick Berry, Priest. Who? You, Marcus. Yeah, that's one of my best friends. Okay. <laughs> that's from Priest. <laughs> Let me see. Where's the chat at? If you go, maybe. Oh, I don't know how big. Go go over there gotcha, and see, gotcha, gotcha. see what this, see what this <laughs> we're talking about. <laughs> Uh, don't read it out loud. Don't read it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even respond to that. that I know, I didn't say, I, you know, I don't even know what to say. Uh listeners out there, we can't repeat mm-hmm. what this uh this 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 notice that came to us. But just know it's funny and it's saying that these guys gotta do better. Um, well, we, basically, we need, we need yeah. to get priest on here. He, 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 I know he said he don't yeah. want to get on. Yeah, nah, you, he you need talk, to come on. You talking about somebody? You talking about Nicholas Berry? You talking about something that's my man? You talking about somebody with some passion? Like our freshman year with Tim Floyd, you know, me, Lee Love, Paris, you know, of course Stevie, mm-hmm. you know, all those guys. Like Priest was that one that got us through that, man. Like. And that's where we get his nickname from. He, he he used to stand up on our like AC or uh, um, heater thing, whatever, and open up the window with my Bible and like he was preaching to the Hilton Coliseum and preaching to us. And, and that's what we start calling him a priest from since then. And it got us through. It got us through all those crazy practices. You know, we won winning early and things like that. So. He's definitely that die, die hard guy who, who kept us going. <laughs> this comment right here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. I, I hey, don't know priest. how much of a priest he is now, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Priest, I hope you're listening. We, we talking about you on the cast, man. And I'm, I'm dying over My eyes is watering, man. Because, you know, that's just how he is. Like, every time I go back and I see him, that's how he is. Um, he was out for Reggie's thing. He came out for uh, the, that Jack Trice stuff. But he's just a, he's a down to earth dude. And people like, when I tell people like, oh, my friend is a pig farmer. I'm building my good friend is a pig farmer. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, he be putting his hand up pig's butts and like making boards and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's, it's like, but it's, but that's the thing about Iowa State. We talk about that family and cyclones everywhere. Right. That's just what it is. You right. know, and it's like, these are people like you, you might not even know that until like the end. Like, you a pig, you a farmer? What? Like, Mm-hmm. But you just, they just, everybody is their family. So, yeah, pre shout out to you, man, for making yeah, us laugh yeah. on this cast today. Man, we you know, laugh. hey, I know, I, I know, this is, this is, is not getting back. any better. No. Not getting any better, but, um, yep, turnover. Oh, we got it back. Um, I don't know what might just, be a little, we just might be a, poorly tonight, huh? I mean, what, uh, what it kind of seems like we're not, not hitting no shots. We're not hitting not no shots now. Nothing. What um what does your uh, time on your clock say? 
How much time left for the game? Eight fifty-six. Okay, I think I might be. A, I'm, I'm there too. They about to shoot free throws, I think, or take it out yeah. of bounds. Okay, I just want to make sure I wasn't ahead of y'all because sometimes I'd be on the phone with people and I oh, and then they'd be like, I haven't seen it. Oh, damn it, George. Yeah. Like, right, right, right. This is my brother, my brother, my brother. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so we got it. I mean, we got a lot to to do um in this in this little bit of time before uh, again, like we said, conference play, because that's right. when all the marbles are there. Um they gotta um, but yeah, we our hands not in it right now. You know, and they, I think they're I think they're getting flustered because they're down so much, and that's right, what right. that's what happens with a young team. You know, you get flustered in those moments, and that's right. you know. So it's like you know, I, I'm going to equate this to like Brock Purdy. He got in one other game this year, played a couple snaps or whatever, uh, but then kind of this is his shot, and it's how he performed when he got in, like being the backup guy, being that young guy, and you just having to be in at that moment. And this is your moment, and these 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 kids are not used to this moment because they haven't had to face something like this this year we haven't been down like this you know we've been down maybe two to five and now to be 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 getting blown up like this you know they're they're acting rushed they're acting flustered and they're not really running the plays i don't think they're the way they're designed like they're just they're trying to make something and force it instead of letting it happen yeah this is one of those ones that's hard to get back once it starts to snowball um yeah, you know, yeah. It, it is it is one of those one of those moments where the the moment is big and mm-hmm. can be too big with it not being a knock on the players. I mean, because it, I mean, it wasn't, it was too big for me my freshman year. So, yeah, you know, at this, in this environment, you know, to, to get down by a little bit, it's hard to come back from but to be down, to be down by this, this amount is definitely harder. So, you know, every, everyone wants to be the hero, but doesn't want to be the hero. Everyone wants to do things well, but if they're not, they're not going if the shot's not going in if you're you know pressing the issue and turning the ball over you know it's just it just seems like one of those games where you just cannot get it you cannot get it back there's nothing that's going in layups not going in you know you're dribbling the ball off your foot is just the weirdest thing ever i mean you know I, i talked about the guy steph curry over in san francisco we've seen him two for 13 two for 14 from the three you know, mm-hmm. it, it can happen, and then he come out the next next game. He eleven for twelve, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Three. yeah. So yeah. you know, it's just a crazy dynamic. But you know, this game right here, you want to keep the bragging rights, and you want to go home with the W. Stuff. Yeah, I feel you on that. I was looking at the time because I was uh I was seeing what date it was because we, I was just looking at the women's schedule too because I wanted to kind of pivot. You know, since we talk about Iowa. And, you know, how the men are doing right now. You know, the women yesterday, um, they lost by about 13, um, you know, ranked. And, again, they don't start conference play into the 31st, too. So they got some time to um, to keep it going. Um, again, they, they they looked a little a little uh, flat when they came out, and I saw that. But other than that, I think they'll, I mean, they'll, they'll bounce back easy the way they looked. Um, we're just, like you said, Steph Curry. He can be off one night or on the next night. This can be one of our off nights, um, the five days in between. Maybe we do better back-to-backs. They got fresh legs. You know, maybe it's something, you know. But that's one of the things that we're going to have to monitor as the season goes through. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. You know, I'm okay with the way it's going right now. Um, again, conference play is what it is. I'm okay uh, with the premise. I'm never okay with losing my eyes. <laughs> I, I feel you. I feel you. Bragging rights alone. I, I feel it's, you. It's something you can't because you got to deal with it forever. And well, the Hawkeye yeah. fans like, are relentless that, and annoying as hell. Well, but those was, was in lacrosse. I don't care if it was in badminton. <laughs> <laughs> like, like <laughs> you, you want to spoil my day? Let something come across the ticket saying I will beat Iowa State. I don't care what is it. It was a staring <laughs> contest. You better blink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know that that next day and tomorrow Friday too. So luckily nobody ain't gonna be doing their work. No way tomorrow. <laughs> so <laughs> so so, when they, so they, they'll be all right when they get in there. They'll be like, uh, you know what? I'm cool. You know, I wasn't I wasn't gonna do nothing anyway. Um, you know, PJ said he had too many beverages to get on. He gonna say something we don't we can't never take back. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> so as, as if we could take back. What <laughs> <he> said. <laughs> Hey, they uh, edited it. You know, just got to take yeah. the shit to edit it out. We good. Uh, yeah, he said, okay, he said, I mean, well, this is what Priest said. He said, it's raining in 35 degrees out here. He said, these uninspired guys, 
aren't going to uh, get any play tonight, even if they walk across the parking lot mm-hmm. to go have some fun. No, uh, so no, <laughs> so, no it, it's that's the edited version. That's the remix for the uh, that's the kids bop version. You know, you know how they right. change the words a couple uh-huh. times. They can't say so. That's the kids. I got I got a four year old and nine year old. I listen to kids bop all the time. I know every every top forty song. The kids bop version. <laughs> that's too funny. I even be sitting in the car with uh, XM on after I drop my daughter off, and she loves me playing the Encanto soundtrack, and I just be driving uh-huh. like fifteen minutes. From home, going to the store, still listening in Kanto. We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> <Nah. laughs> then I got hit a button, man. I'm like, man, I just be, I be vibing to it because every morning that's what I listen to when I take her to school, you know. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, we got, we got to play some, we got to play more inspired basketball, um, and we have to, you know, you know, want to be there and want to win. Um, I'm not saying they're, they're, they're not giving up at all. I mean, I'm watching their, their body language. I'm walking with, watching what they're trying to do. They are not giving up. Um, and they're trying to. So nice score, forty-two, sixty-six, six minutes left. Wave, we can we can play some good D. Just, we can do this, wave. but but so in in this situation, should they be should they be pressing more right now? What's <laughs> up? Absolutely. What's up with you, little man? Yeah, man? We got other. We got all kinds of guests hey, on here up? today. What's up? Not- He's sneaking around down here. I'm like, ain't no point in sneaking. Just come by right, and say right. what's up, man. Come, come say hi to us. We Go chilling. ahead, man. All right. You say what's up? All right. We'll see. <laughs> um, so <laughs> should, yeah, should we? Yeah, they, 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 they need – I mean, we're in the second half with 6.30 left, you know, so – Off his can't foot. take the files home. No. Nope. You know, um, no matter how many you have, you know, you got you got to be – unless you got four. Yeah. You know, you got to be more more aggressive. Um, I think the coach where, you know, early in the first half, you know, we're going to bring the pressure a little bit. One of my pet peeves is, is getting stupid fouls in the beginning of, of, yeah. of the game. Yeah. So if, yeah. if we've gotten into the second half, like I tell Junior all the time, like, dude, you got you got zero fouls in the third quarter. First of all, if any of my players in the game without having a foul, then I got a foul. Mm. And then secondly, because you should get a foul at least running through somebody's chest. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we get to the second half and you got one or two fouls, we're going to turn this pressure up. Yeah. You got to turn the pressure up. You got you to make the referees make a call, and mm-hmm. I might get lucky. I, you know, 75, 80% of the fouls I'm going to occur th- that I'm going to make in the second half are pretty much going to be fouls. But I'm going to mm-hmm. put it in their hands and make sure, make them make a call because, like I said, I might get lucky. They know the magnitude of this game. Um, if you're making a run and you have momentum going, it's going to make them, you know, a little tight on their whistle. So you got to pick up this pressure. You got to shoot the gaps. Everybody got to be flying around, helping each other out. If somebody rolls to the basket and they're wide open, you got to put them on the floor legally, mm-hmm. but you got to put them on the floor. <laughs> right. Make them earn that, you know, um, from the from the free throw line and just let them know that, I mean, the game is not over. We're still here. We, we're going to still keep chopping away. At this at this lead until we can do something to knock it off. Okay, so 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 one of the last questions I have was something that that came up. So, do people do do you agree with using the timeouts earlier? Because we didn't use the timeouts earlier when they got on them runs. Do you believe in using up the timeouts earlier to, to kind of change that momentum? Whether you're on a run when you're on a when you're on, when they're on a run, not when you're on a run when they're on a run. And you want to stop that? We had a lot of timeouts near the end of that that half. Should we have been using those differently to kind of stop and ch- try to change that momentum, try to freeze them out a little bit? Are you talking to me? Yeah, either, either um, one of y'all. It, it depends on what kind of run that they're on. Like, I, I've been I've been in games where you know they they didn't score six in a row, and you still just call a timeout, and we mm. come down and, and and miss, and they score. Four in a row. He called another timeout. We got to stop this. We got to stop this momentum. Yeah. You yeah. know, whatever it is, whatever the case may be, you know, you're not going to get a prize for keeping those timeouts. You know, mm. it, it, there's no, there's no right or wrong or no good or bad time to make a timeout. You just got to call it in in the moments of where the momentum is. And and you know, there's been some times where we've gone the whole first half and not call a timeout because things were going good. So. You know, if, if the players aren't, aren't tired or anything like that and you can hold them, hold the timeouts and the game is closed, then I understand that. But if they – when I mean, what was the score in the beginning? What, 16-0 or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it was terrible. I, yeah. I looked away a couple times. 24-3 to three when I cut it on. I said, a right. four or something. I was like, damn. 
Uh. Right. So, <laughs> so like in, in, in moments and stuff like that, because with us not scoring and them scoring that many points in a row, you know the gym is rocking. So uh-huh. they're gonna call a time like he's he's called a timeout before and the gym was rocking and they you know we go back onto the floor and they're rocking so hard he called a timeout again right then mm-hmm. we turn right back around and sit back down you know i'm, I'm giving yeah. them a couple more minutes and yeah. when we come out they're a little bit less you know yeah. as excited as they were you know because it changed the the whole mindset and and the strategy of, of what the the home crowd is bringing there but if you don't use them this this is what kind of happens yeah and look you said we got three three left right now right yeah, we got we got three left right now, but we just got uh, some one of the players got a uh, he got four four fouls, so they just sat him down. So I guess they're they're being a little more aggressive right now because they're getting some foul calls right now. So I think that's uh, that's one of the keys that we talked about is being more aggressive on it. You said you didn't want nobody leaving the game with no fouls, so we got six yeah. fouls on the, on the uh, on the board right now. They got seven, so uh, almost in the one, getting closer to one on one. But um, they're pressing them full court now. Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, that's what that's what they <laughs> literally they should have been, been, been doing this two minutes ago, you know. Yeah, this should have been happening, yeah. They should have did that two minutes ago when it was like six minutes when I when I first asked that question because, yeah, they're 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 flustered them right now, you know. No, they they should have did this 10 minutes ago when we were still down, <laughs> yeah, you're right, you, right. But, you're right. But, but again, another thing, uh, Chris Murray is in play, so maybe yeah. you know, the game plan and everything that we defensively. Yeah. We're yeah. gearing up for him, and yeah. you take him out, and now it's some, it's some guys that you've probably yeah. never seen in this position. The rotations are different, and it's just, you know, matched up differently for us, and they came out and made some big shots. Yeah. That's, yep. that's, that's the same. Roll you know, the ball. Kinda... Roll the ball. There's no oh. – <laughs> <laughs> Killing roll the clock. The ball. <laughs> that's the same with football, man. When you, you know, you game plan for a dynamic quarterback, he ends yeah. up getting hurt and going out, and then his backup comes in and tears you apart. Exact same thing. <laughs> and that's how you, right. you know, you game plan for this one dude. You know, you got right. you, you nail down the rice, and then this little dude comes in. It's like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So came out and gave you the Geno Smith. Everybody, right. like, where, did, where did Geno Smith come from? Like everybody had forgotten about Geno Smith. Yeah, he up in Seattle, tearing it up. Going to work, man. Going to work. Oh, Let man. me ask y'all, which y'all so. I'm, you know, I'm the football guy, so I'm asking okay. you your thoughts on Coach Prime. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got a lot of yeah. thoughts on that. Yeah. So here, here, here's my thing. You know, he went to HBCU. My ex, my cousin went to uh, Jackson State. Okay. So he, he went, went down to? there. He went to Jackson State. Who did? It? My cousin. Right. No, my cousin. Okay. My cousin, alumni, alumni. Yeah. But I'm just saying. So he he took him undefeated this year. Yeah. Um. And he went to Colorado, and people were like, why are you going to Colorado? It's not Florida. It's not, you know, some hot spot where people want to go. But if you really want to prove to people who you are, like, he don't need the money. He don't need the coach. Like, he's doing this to say, okay, I took this HBCU 13 and 0. I showed you some things. He said, I'm going to take this Colorado job where they suck. Because I think in his speech, he told him, you know, the transfer portal is open. If you want to go, go. Like he already, he he said that right away, but you come into a program that needs to rebuild. If I'm, if I'm going into college and I'm looking at the coaches I have, I was planning on going to the HBCU. I was planning to do this. I planned to do that. Coach prime hall of famer is my coach. And I know I want to get to that next level. Who can help me get to that next level? Right. Coach prime. Mm-hmm. who's been at that level to like that I can trust and believe in that he what he's telling me even when mm-hmm. he's yelling at me and I'm pissed off coach prime right. who could turn this program and get some recruits out to Colorado coach prime so I look at all these things and says he has nowhere else to go but up yes it's Colorado mm-hmm. it's cold they're gonna have to get their breathing right if they're not from there because you mile high I was out there I drank like two drinks one time and I was tore up yeah. I'm like yeah. man nobody it's told real. me that it's, it's different up there. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, you, you, you got a, you got a couple of things there, but if you really are committed and this is where you want to go, who better? And then again, right. you're taking a program and going nowhere, but up. That's my thoughts on it. I, I think the move was a good move by him. Yeah. Um, definitely a step up for him. Um, ultimately, you know, he'll get to a power five school. Um, he did great things at Jackson State and you can't take that away from him. But at the same time, you understand the 
you, you kind of understand the ruffles uh, that people are coming up with. Um, but at the same time, you still got to understand the, the fact that if any of us can level up, you know, what is that? 5.9 is 5.9, <laughs> you know, 4.9 <laughs> mil, 5.9, yeah. whatever the case is, that's, that's a step up and his name, his cachet is, is going to, it's going to bring the player, you know, people say, well, how's he going to get recruits? I'm like, come on now. You know, one of the first thing he said when he, when he talked to him, you know, number two is coming. You know, number two is coming and, and, and some other one's coming too. You know, yeah, and, and as soon as that transfer portal opened up, you know, now you're starting to see the players trying to get there and things like that. Because like you said, you know, um, it's 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 a Nick Saban effect. You know, every, mm-hmm. before, everybody was going to Alabama because they know this is, this is a pro offense, defense, mm-hmm. pro school. Like, like people don't understand, like you, you line up Alabama – on the outside of those teams like Georgia and Clemson and stuff like that, like them guys is they get off that bus and that looks like an NFL team, mm-hmm. and because mm-hmm. you get NFL players there, and you think Prime is not going to do the same? Now, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I'm from you know Louisiana, about two and a half, three hours from Jackson, so I got a lot of family members that went to Grambling. They always against you know Jackson and every other HBCU. Uh, my wife actually went to Southern University. She played mm-hmm. ball there. Um, so she have her opinions about, you know, him leaving everything. She's all for it, just like yeah. I am. Because, I mean, you just got to understand that, you know, if he has a, if he has the aspiration and, and the goals to move up, you know, just like everybody else have, they're going to do, do the exact same thing. It's not like he went to JSU and they suck and they lost. And, you know, mm-hmm. people, you know, so he just came here to – you know, to get his a name, he's a, he a name, yeah, right. and all of yeah. that. Like he first undefeated season in, in their school history, and you know now it's that time to to go to the next level. He has sons that play for him that's trying to get to the next level, and mm-hmm. you got to understand. You know, Steve McNair was the last, you know, in a in a HBCU right who mm-hmm. got a shot to win the Heisman. How much did they really look at his son this year? even with the year that he had being at, you know, um, uh, an HBCU or not at a power five. Power uh, five, yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, conference uh, team. So you got to think about all that as well. You know, you got to mm-hmm. think about, you know, the position is going to put them all in. And, you know, in a couple of years, they're not going to be there playing for him anymore. So he he's worrying about the longevity that he's going to have and what's going to take him to the next step. And, you know, this was the opportunity for him. And I'm not mad at him at all. Yeah, not yeah. at all. You asked the crit. You asked the question, Brent. So what's your what's your thoughts? Same thing, or what you what I you mean? Think? I'm all over the place. I'm not not in a bad way by any means. I'm you know I think uh, he's getting some you know unfair criticism in some cases. I mean mm-hmm. I think especially being from the south, you always I was always told you leave it leave it better than you found it. And I think yeah. Dion yeah. he did that at Jackson yeah. State. He kind of laid out a, a crazy outline of what it should look like. He right. changed a lot of young men's lives, and I think he laid a really great foundation for whoever's to come. Not only that, but he put, he helped rekindle the whole HBCU fire. Because, right, I mean, if we real, yeah. nobody really pays attention to HBCUs. You know, I mean, yeah. it is what it yeah, is. Unless it's the Bayou Classic, uh, right? That's yeah. it. Yeah. Right? right. So you're talking about you know a tradition in the Bayou Classic, but right. outside right. of outside of people from the South, nobody really knows. You ask somebody right. from New York about the Bayou Classic, they won't know. You know what I'm saying? So, and yeah. I mean, you know, there's no notoriety. So I think he he did that. I, I think he, you know, helped Jackson State out tremendously. And I don't think he got enough, you know, credit from some. From now I think he's getting a little bit of unfair criticism. But, you know, it's the nature of the beast, too. I mean, you know, he, he's, he set out to help change the landscape of HBCUs and put them on the map. And I think he did that. Um, you know, some people want him to stay a little longer. But, I mean, going 27 <laughs> and 5 in three years, right. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's that's phenomenal because yeah, right. nobody was winning like that. Like so, yeah, you know, kind of taking it. You know, with that man, I think he's gonna bring that exact same culture to the Pac-12 and to Colorado. Like I think well, Colorado about to be in for it. yeah, yeah, They're about to be yeah. in for a crazy culture right. shot. Oh but, yeah, oh now, yeah. Now, now some of those Southern boys gonna be in for a little bit of cold too. Yeah, but you know, I think <laughs> he's, uh, you know, with that man, I think he's you know, I think he's he, he's well within his rights to do it. 
Yeah. It's a business, man. At the yeah. end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's about uh it's about leveling up. Cause I mean, I've never heard of anybody having a job that didn't take a promotion. Right. Or a pay raise. You know what yep. I'm saying? So yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong <laughs> with it, you know. Uh I I seen this one tweet where somebody said, I think I reposted it, it said Half of y'all, no, ninety percent of y'all don't work for, a, you know, a a black black owned business. Watch the Dion, I'm like you right? Know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, he a, yeah. First of all, majority of them don't understand who own you know HBCUs. <laughs> you yeah. know, but that's neither here nor there. But you know, just, you just rumble, talk. You don't want to say different mm-hmm. things. Um, jealousy. The people at Jackson State, you know, now you're winning. You know, so mm-hmm. now we're. We're talking about, you know, the other schools and now we got the cash in and everything like that. Then once that's gone, now, now what's going to happen? So now we got to mm-hmm. come back down to earth about what's yeah. going to happen against the rivals and all that different stuff. So I, I get it. They don't want to lose that. Um, but you but you just got to understand, you know, whoever they put in place to replace them, hopefully, you know, they can keep the winning tradition, everything that goes on. But you do got to understand that what he brought was him. Yeah. Now, yeah, that was his, his cachet, that was his charisma. That was, you know, what they weren't getting five star players down there. You know, yeah. we're talking about five star players, you know, right? Players, so if the NFL was, you know, one and done, they would have been one and done going to the league. Those type yeah. of yeah. like, like, come on now. So, so of course, if he levels up and goes to the next place, they're going to follow him with as well. Because, I mean, it's only, it's only befitting to, to want to, play against the best to understand that you have that opportunity and to have that opportunity, you know, it's here now for him. That's what's up. Yeah. Okay. I am yep. curious to see what his son does though in the Pac-12. Yeah. yeah that's it's going to be a little, little different yeah. ball game for him up there. I ain't going to lie to you. All the, yeah, all the receivers but, and DBs play out there. But when you, when, but when you give them better talent too, that's, yeah, you know, you, yeah. you, when you got better talent, you know, it makes like, I, I give, I've always had. I give Jamal uh, Jamal Tinsley the utmost respect and and props in the world. Like, forget what you think me as me as a player. When Jamal Tinsley came to Iowa State, that man, it took me somewhere totally different than mm-hmm. I ever thought I could ever be. Just yeah. because of how because I had somebody as dynamic as him. Yeah. You know, it took so much pressure off. Like it was it was time. Times where I had to watch where the ball was coming from, where he's hitting you in the face with the ball. I just didn't have those type, you know. I, I love Mike Nurse to death, but Mike was playing point the year before. He's that's not his natural position. He's a two guard. So once once Jamal came and he moved to the two, things same way with him. It started to click. So once you have better players around you, yeah, you know the dynamic of the whole scheme and everything opens up. You know if if you get some players out there it, at Colorado that's you know what? What low fours in in the forties and mm-hmm. blowing by people? All yeah. you gotta do is throw it up there, and they go up there and get it. Yeah. You know, now you got some six five, six six receivers, maybe versus some six two, six ones. And well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, you're right. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be good to see this. I mean, that's gonna be an inter- it's gonna be an interesting gonna year be next year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I saw Marcus. You you just picked up one of your um, hot sauces because. Man. I was just about to I was about to close us out, and you I think you picked the one up, the jalapeno green apple. Is that the one in your hand? All these look hot. So I'm a. Uh, yeah, I went I'm, fire though. The jalapeno so, green apple. Yeah. Fire. So I just smoked some pork chops, and I had two of them. Me and the wife had one for dinner, and I got one left in the fridge. I'm gonna warm that up tomorrow for lunch, and I'm gonna try that jalapeno green apple on it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my mm-hmm. review on it next week. Um, but I, I'm excited to try all these. This this cherry rhubarb reaper. Listen, no bark, not, all bite is what these say. That's their tagline. Hey, Marcus, might well throw that about, outside, man. Right? I don't, I don't know about <laughs> excited to try it. I don't. You know, I was getting some subway earlier. I was getting some subway earlier with my daughter, and uh, I asked the guy. I was like, you know, what's that? What's it? Um, it was a sriracha or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was like, well, do you like spicy food? I was like, not at all. Like, literally. But ketchup level, I'm out of it. He's like, nah, you don't want to mess with this at all. And then, <laughs> then the other guy came, he was like, yeah, it's it's pretty spicy. He was like, you know, I eat spicy food on the regular and things like that. I was, I was like, I can't even eat hot Cheetos. He was like, hell no. <laughs> and I touched his dude. And my daughter was oh, like, oh, man. Because they know I'm just. I, I'm... That's, why, that's why I asked my wife. I said, it wasn't no ranch in there? <laughs> yeah, so I, 
<laughs> because yeah, man, I'm, I'm the kind of person that I love. I I'm gonna admit this. I love when my scalp start tingling. Mm-mm. When it's oh, hot, man. your scalp start tingling. I said, you know it's good. <laughs> no. So Nose I'm running <laughs> for here, get yeah. a little cut some, couple yeah. beads up there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's- <laughs> man, you talking about taking get some Zantac quick, man. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. But hey. 75 <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. Wow, and this was friend 500 win. 500 win. Mm. It's tragic. Against us, that's we never gonna let that down. Uh, never. so so on that note, uh, this is side, this is the side of the store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on, hey, ship just text, let me know if I need, hold on, what did it say? Let me know if I need to put, <laughs> let me know if I need to put extra explicit warnings on tonight's episode. <laughs> Man, it's hey, it if I want to remember, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. hey, he the one ended it so. <laughs> This whole thing will be on YouTube, but on the podcast, <laughs> I think it's gonna be edited a little bit. Hey. But you know, we want to thank we want to thank Three Beers Media, uh, Brown Dogs Farm, and Revelton uh, for supporting us in this, this endeavor. Uh, you know, we having fun with it. We hope y'all having fun listening and subscribing to it. Uh, but this is a uh, side of storm signing out. We lost to Iowa two days in a row. Damn. That shit sucks. Yep, oh, that's, how, that's how we gonna close. I ain't gonna even close like we normally do. That Brent, you had to, you had to quote. It's over. That shit <laughs> I, I, I'll let y'all next week have. A, if you did, if you having a hot holiday, you going out somewhere, you know, enjoy, be safe. We'll holler at y'all be later. Safe. Enjoy, family. Peace. Holler at you.